Hi everyone, my name's Corrie. I'm a cricket contributing artist under the name of Glitterati and I've also been a cricket user since 2009. Today I wanted to go through Cricut Design Space settings. Um, I know that it can be quite confusing when you're a beginner to uh, find all of the settings in Design Space and uh, Design Space is constantly being updated with new features and things do move around. So I just wanted to do this. It's quite quick. I'm just going to go through each of the settings and what they mean and um, hopefully this will help you get started with your projects. Okay so here we are in Cricut Design Space and it will usually look something like this when you first logged in. So this is just like the front page which is under discover and there's collections to explore. These all change across the top depending on uh, what kind of themes are going on at the moment. Um, at the moment it's uh, September so we've got back to school, obviously lots of weddings in summer, there's a contributing artists one, um, stickers, things like that. So we've got all of those on this front page but we're going to focus today on this area here across the top, right? So we've got a bell here with a one on it that means I have one notification that uh, Design Space was updated. And then if I click on here, um, this goes into my profile. And as you can see here, there is a pencil. And if I hover over my face there, another pencil. If I click on those, I can change the photos which are there. I can also edit my profile by clicking here. And then just down here, we've got my images. These are the images that I have uploaded as a contributing artist. And then my shared projects. You have to share a project. It doesn't automatically get made public. So don't worry about that if you're new. And then over here with these three dots, if you click on that and you click share, that's to share your profile. So you can share it outside of Design Space on Pinterest, Facebook or you can copy the link and put it somewhere else. Maybe you've got a blog or you just want to send it to someone so that they can find you. So that's there. Next I wanted to go into settings. This is what we're going to be talking about in great detail today. So first tab is general. It'll go uh, into what country that you're in, what language you use, whether you save on your cloud and computer or just on your cloud. Application experience, I'm in live at the moment, but sometimes I do switch into beta. Beta is the version of Cricut which is being tested. Um, so if you hear maybe on one of the Facebook pages or something that there's a new feature coming out and it's in beta and you wanna find it and have a try, just click on to beta and then it will restart your design space and you can have a little play around with it. Do be aware that this is obviously where they test new things. So sometimes it may not work, um, but there is a way to report bugs or reach out to Cricut and tell them your feedback on anything that you have tried in beta. Next, we've got about design space. This is the version that I am currently on. I updated just this morning. It is September 2024. So you may be watching much later than that and maybe you have a version which doesn't look the same. I just wanted to point that out that things do change and move quite regularly. Um, so we'll move on to the next tab at the top here which is content. This is a new tab. Um, mature content wasn't always available on Cricut Design Space. It is quite new and you can hide it if you want by clicking here. It will usually be hidden. So um, don't be worried if you've got kids using Design Space and you didn't know that was there. It's always hidden until you decide to change it. When you do click show, 
I'll do it now and show you. When you click show, this box comes up and it asks if you are of legal consent age and you say yes, submit. And then the first time you do it, or at least the first time I did it, I received an email to check that I had definitely clicked for mature content to show. So you would know if somebody accidentally clicked on it. Next is machines. New product setup is self-explanatory. If you have um, maybe a press or a mug press or something, you would go into here to start the process of getting it set up and registered with Cricut. Update the firmware. Every now and again, you need to check if your machines have um, updated firmware. Again, sometimes there might be some kind of uh, incompatibility between the version of design space and the firmware that you have on your maker, for example. So you just need to make sure that you keep these up to date. Machine calibration, this is generally used for stickers. If I click on it, you can see uh, which devices it's available for just about everything, I think. Um, and it will go through a process of um, checking the cuts. It prints off um, a sheet and then you would cut it and tell it which was the closest cut, which is correct. And it just helps it to cut around stickers more accurately. Machine care, I don't really know what that's for. I haven't seen it before, but when I click on it, it just says Venture, and I don't have a Venture, so I can't really tell you anything about that, I'm afraid. Um, custom material settings, um, I'm going to leave that until last. I'll come back to that because I feel like it's a more advanced area to go into, and this is just meant to be a beginner video today. Link cartridges. If you're old school like me and you used to have one of the machines um, that took cartridges and you want to have those images available on Cricut Design Space, then this is where you would go to link the cartridges. Next, we're going over to the canvas. I like to have my canvas set up as a partial grid and as imperial units but you, I'll just show you what it looks like. So I feel this looks more like a Cricut mat with the one inch by one inch squares. So if I wanted to change it, you could go to full grid, which is lots and lots of little squares. Or you could take it away completely and it would just be white like that. As you can see, I've got inches across here at the moment as well. You can change it. I'll just change it back to partial because that's how I like it. I like it at Imperial, but you can change it to metric. You can see it's changed here at the side. And then, um, oh, for the next part, I just need to put something on the mat. I'll just put a shape on there for you. So I've just clicked over onto shapes there and put this shape down, this octagon. As you can see over here on the right hand side, it says basic cut. It also says basic cut under operation here. But under the settings menu, under canvas, you have the option to take that away on this right hand menu. If I just toggle it on and off, you can see that it's basic cut no, then it doesn't show it at all. I quite like it there, um, so I like to leave it on. Next tab is load type. Now, this is useful if, for example, you make really big banners out of vinyl. Uh, say you've got a Maker 3 and you need to use the long mats all the time. You can change it so that it's always thinking you have a 12 by 24 mat rather than the standard 12 by 12. But usually, as a beginner, I would just leave that exactly how it is. This is for print then cut. Um, I 
would have said A4 or letter is the usual. So you've got all the machines in there and you can play around with that if you need to. Next is notifications. That's what I was telling you about with this little bell at the top here. Now I just have new followers and I keep the rest of them off because um, I found that I was getting a lot of notifications. And then I have the ones from Cricut as well. It's up to you which ones you want. You can just toggle them on and off and it's easy enough to change it. Next, we're going into system. Um, again, nothing to do in here really. Um, it just tells you what system you're operating on, what your computer is working on, and then your system resources. So that is all of the settings that I can think of that we would want to go through um, for a beginner. The only other thing that I think I should possibly touch upon is this report issue flag report a bug feature requests general feedback or contact us so these are here if you were using uh, beta for example and you thought oh that's not working or i think this is a great idea you can uh, drop cricket a message and let them know and then there is help here as well and if you click that, you go into a separate website. It's cricket.com contact. And this is for you to find a number in your local area to find someone to speak to if you're having issues. Hopefully you don't need to use that. Okay, so I just remembered that I said we would come back to the custom material settings which is found under the machines tab. This is something that I wouldn't really bother with if I was a beginner. Um, so we'll just click into it and we'll select a device. These are the machines that I have. I'll choose my maker. And then once it's connected, it will bring up a list of compatible materials with my maker. So as you can see, we've got material name, cut pressure, multi-cut and blade type. So just as an example, say I was cutting acetate, but I felt like it wasn't cutting through. Um, maybe it could do with more pressure or a, a different kind of cut. We could go in here and you can move that up or down to increase or decrease the pressure. This one is how many times it cuts around the shape. And then obviously this one is the blade. For acetate, it's saying you can only use a fine point blade. But there are settings like, um, let's see, felt, for example. Um, I cut felt quite a lot. There's a couple of settings though. This is the better one for me personally, the rotary blade one. But say I wanted to just change this one, I can change the blade to rotary because I would never cut felt with a fine point blade. Um, the only ones that you can't change, I believe, are um, knife. Let me just scroll up and find one. Knife blade. Yes, editing knife blade settings is not allowed. But that's just, I just wanted to point out that that was there. So um, I hope that helps. I hope you found the tutorial helpful. I'm trying to do a series of basic tutorials. Um, so if you're interested, please follow and subscribe. Thanks now. Bye.